excuse me. And uh, we are beginning a new lesson, so uh, I think Brother uh, Brother Caden is uh, going around and handing them out, and uh, so he'll uh, hand those out. And uh, oops, there we go. Uh, so, anyways, uh, he'll he'll hand those out if you. Uh, uh, didn't already go get one. I don't think he uh, handed them out earlier. I think he got them right right before uh, yeah the offering time and all that. So Psalm chapter number twenty three. It's uh, in the series of Blessed is the Man. But uh, again, it's a new lesson. We're going to be looking at lesson number four, the Lord our caring shepherd. So uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Psalm chapter number twenty three uh, here tonight, and uh, I'll read it. <coughs> Uh, actually, I'll just read verse number one is all I'll read tonight. Uh, I mean, we'll read more, but uh, uh, that's what we're going to look at first here. Uh, but uh, uh, then we'll have a word of prayer and then get into the lesson uh, here tonight. So Psalm chapter number 23, and uh, let's, uh, let's all read it together. Let's stand. I know normally Wednesday night we don't do this, but uh, just for tonight, uh, we'll stand uh, just for a moment. And uh, I'm going to have you read with me, though, uh, Psalm chapter number 23, verse number one. We're just going to read verse number one, all right? Let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, uh, we're going to be looking at the rest of that, but uh, uh, again, we're looking at uh, lesson number four, the Lord, our caring shepherd. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for this time that we're able to look at your word and, and uh, Lord, be able to uh, uh, glean some things from your word in this lesson here tonight. Uh, Lord, that uh, we'd be able to apply these things to our heart and our life. Lord, that we'd be a changed people, a different people. Lord, help us to realize how much the Lord really does care for us. Lord, I pray now you'll uh, uh, just guide and direct everything that we do here tonight. Uh, guide and direct my lips, guide and direct even our ears uh, and our minds and, and our hearts. Lord, help us to be attentive to what you have for us. Lord, bless our time together. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. The Lord, our caring shepherd. You know, uh, uh, some of you remember probably uh, uh, the series I preached about uh, about sheep. How many remember that? Uh, all right, a few of you. All right. All uh, right. A good number of you, and uh, talked about, uh, uh, there was a number of me messages that I talked about, uh, all we like sheep. I think there's like four or five messages I preached on Sunday mornings, and how much we are like sheep, and it is true, amen? The Bible even talks about all we like sheep, amen? Isaiah chapter number 53 and verse number 6, and, uh, but uh, if it indicates that we are sheep, would also indicate that there is a shepherd, amen? And uh, uh, that's exactly what uh, Psalm chapter number 23 here talks about. This uh, particular psalm is undoubtedly one of the uh, most, uh, I, I would say probably most notorious, I guess, is, or uh, popular, maybe that's probably not notorious, probably popular is more a, a better uh, uh, word there, uh, probably the most popular uh, uh, psalm of the entire uh, book of Psalm. Uh, I dare say uh, most people, when I've, I've done funerals, and I ask them, hey, is there any particular scripture you'd like me to read uh, at uh, you know, your loved one's funeral? Uh, I would say probably, I, I think this would be a fair estimate, I'd say probably about 95%, so uh, very close to almost 100%. So 95% of the people will say, Psalm chapter 23, Psalm 23, you know. Uh, so a lot of people know of this uh, passage. It's a, uh, a, probably one of the best loved passages in the Bible. Whoever we are, though, wherever we are, and whatever circumstances we're in, it ha has a message for all of us. It, uh, no matter what situation we're going through, no matter what uh, we're dealing with, it certainly has a message that's there for us. The whole psalm is a wonderful illustration of the truth expressed to us in uh, Proverbs chapter number four. Turn there with me, if you will, Proverbs chapter number four. Keep your finger there in Psalm chapter 23. We'll come back to it here in just a few moments here. But uh, Proverbs chapter number four, and notice with me there, verse number 18. Psalm chapter number uh, four. Uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs, I, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter number four. And verse number 18 says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more 
unto the perfect day. And this is exactly what uh, this is an illustration of, the Lord uh, leading us, guiding us, directing us. And that's what this verse is talking about. The, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. It, it certainly is a, uh, a great expression of uh, you and I as we uh, follow the Lord. If Again, we're, if we're sheep, we're following our shepherd, or, or we ought to be following uh, the Lord as our shepherd. And the position of this particular psalm is very significant. You know, I don't know if you ever uh, pay attention. I hope, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. I hope you pay attention when you're reading the Bible, amen? I hope you don't just uh, read the Bible to, you know, check that box and, and say, okay, I've, I've done it for the day and, and I don't have to worry about it. Sometimes you need to pay attention. I've, I've said this before. Pay attention to the verses before and after a certain verse. Uh, pay attention to the chapters before and after a particular chapter. This uh, particular uh, uh, instance is true. Uh, if you notice in Psalm chapter number uh, 22, and uh, if you notice uh, in this particular one, uh, it says uh, in verse number one, Psalm chapter number 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from, my, uh, for, uh, and from uh, the words of my roaring? <clears throat> but if you notice uh, this particular Psalm, uh, Psalm chapter number 22 is, uh, you know, mostly in, uh, written in the past tense. So, uh, you know, everything is uh, talking about what's happened to the past. And, and uh, it uh, sp- certainly speaks of, uh, you know, the Lord being our good shepherd. And uh, uh, certainly we're even told about that in John chapter number 10. So uh, look at me, if you will, at John chapter number 10. Again, we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture at the beginning of this, uh, kind of going back and forth, and you'll see why here, I believe, in a moment. John chapter number 10 and uh, verse number 11, it says this, this is Jesus speaking, these are his words. John chapter 10 verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And if you were to look back again in uh, chapter number 22, uh, this is actually speaking of, uh, this particular psalm is speaking uh, towards the future, but it has a past tense uh, in, in uh, the wording, uh, but it's talking about when Jesus will die on the cross. So he was the, the good shepherd. He was willing to give his life uh, for the sheep. So he did that. And in uh, Psalm chapter number uh, 24, if you were to look at that one, and uh, if you notice uh, all that it says there, I mean, for the sake of time, I'm not reading all of the chapters there. So I would encourage you to go back, read Psalm chapter number 22. I would encourage you to read uh, uh, all of Psalm chapter number 24. Uh, but uh, if you notice there, uh, verse number one, it says, "The Lord is the, uh, I'm sorry, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, he uh, who, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor, nor uh, sworn deceitfully. But uh, then he goes on to, uh, if you notice uh, in verse number seven, lift up your heads, uh, O ye gates, and uh, be lift up uh, ever, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord... Uh, uh, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And of course, uh, and the last word there says, Selah, or it is, it is finished, or it's uh, good enough. Uh, but, uh, uh, or so it is. But anyways, uh, um, uh, he's talking about when, in uh, the future tense. One day he will be our king, amen? He is our king as a Christian. Uh, you know, uh, he's our king now, amen? Uh, we have, uh, you know, a president, and uh, uh, our president is not a king, amen? Uh, praise the Lord for that. But uh, uh, certainly we need to pray for our president, amen? Pray for the election and all that. But, but uh, uh, you know, the Lord, we know uh, one day he will be our king. And by the way, he is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. Amen. Uh, you know, somebody can sit there and say, well, I'm, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, who was, who's the king over in England? Uh, uh, Charles? Is it King Charles? I think is that his name. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, he's the king of England and uh, all their territories and all that. But guess what? One day, uh, the Bible tells us, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is 
is Lord. Amen. Uh, so one day, even, uh, uh, you know, King Charles, as much as, uh, uh, you know, he is, uh, uh, in, in, as far as his majesty and all that, his, he, he is the king. But uh, one day, he will uh, bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, our president, our current president, he'll bow the knee to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, president Trump, who was our president, uh, he'll bow the knee uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can go back to every single uh, president that we've had. Uh, we've had 46 presidents in our nation's history, amen? Every single one of them will bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter. We can go back all the way to, uh, uh, you know, the, the, every single king and every single ruler uh, that's been, you know, uh, even Alexander the Great, even uh, Napoleon. Every single one of them will bow the knee to Jesus Christ because he is the king. And one day, if that's what this uh, particular psalm is talking about, in the future, he's going to be king uh, of glory. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. And I want you to notice in uh, 1 Peter chapter number uh, uh, th- uh, 5, 1 Peter chapter number 5, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter number 5, and notice with me there, verse number 4. First Peter chapter number 5, verse number 4, and notice what he says there. And when the, What? Chief shepherd uh, shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of uh, glory that fadeth not away. And of course, he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, being in in samples, being examples and all that. Uh, But nonetheless, we uh, we know that uh, he's talking about in the future uh, that one day, excuse me, he'll he'll be that chief uh, shepherd. So not only do we have uh, there in our, our text as far as, uh, Psalm chapter number 22, talking about uh, the Lord is a good shepherd, and uh, uh, the Lord is our chief shepherd in chapter number 24, but uh, we talked about how the Lord is uh, there in chapter uh, 23, uh, and uh, notice what it says there. Notice that first verse, the Lord, what's that next word? Is. So chapter 22 has got a past tense if you look at all, all the uh, uh, verbs and adverbs and all that, uh, past tense of chapter number 24, it's a future tense, uh, so looking in the future. Uh, but uh, chapter 23, everything is present. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He maketh me to lie down. That's uh, something immediate. He restoreth my soul. That's something present. Yea, though I walk, uh, notice that's a present tense, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Again, that's a a present tense, so on and so forth. But if you uh, uh, were to look at that, you'd realize that he is our great shepherd. Notice with me in Hebrews chapter number 13, Hebrews chapter number 13, we're going to see how he is our great shepherd here in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number uh, 20 and following. Hebrews chapter number uh, uh, 13 and verse number 20 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that, what? Great shepherd of who? The sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, and working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So we see there uh, uh, something that happens there in in chapter 22, as I said, uh, there's a past tense. Uh, chapter 23, there's a present tense. And chapter number 24 is a future tense. So he's our good shepherd. He's uh, uh, our, our great shepherd, I'm sorry, the one that's uh, uh, going to take care of us. And the key that unlocks the whole psalm is the opening phrase there, uh, back in Psalm chapter number 23. Again, look back at that text. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He is a shepherd, but best of all, he is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He's personal. Amen. He cares about you. You know, uh, uh, the thing about a shepherd is the shepherd cares for the sheep. Amen. If you were ever to look at, I, as I said, uh, uh, when I did the series on uh, sheep, uh, it's, it's very interesting. I think it was sheep101.info, uh, I think is a website, if I remember correctly. And that's uh, it's something that's kind of ingrained in my brain right now. But um, if you look at uh, 
uh, what shepherds do as far as even, uh, even in the scriptures. You have examples in the scriptures. But the shepherd cares for the sheep. He'll go out of his way. He leaves the 99 and goes and find the one lost sheep. Why? Because he cares even about that one lost sheep. Uh, he uh, uh, will bind up uh, the wounds. He talks about uh, pouring air, uh, oil uh, uh, on the head, you know, uh, uh, that runs down. And, and uh, there's all kinds of things. There's the oil. There's, there's a reason why they put oil on uh, the heads of, uh, of sheep. And it's uh, uh, they, one of the things that can drive the sheep insane is all the bugs and flies and things like that. And so the uh, shepherd would put oil uh, to uh, uh, keep the, uh, you know, all the um, uh, bugs and things away, flies especially, uh, away from the, uh, uh, you know, from the eyes and from the, the head of the sheep. But he is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He is the shepherd of all shepherds. But let me ask you this. Is he yours? Have you allowed him to be your shepherd? Again, a shepherd is one that says, hey, little sheep, follow me, amen. And the Bible tells us that my sheep hear my voice and follow me, amen. The problem with a lot of Christians is that they'll sit there and say, well, I'm a, I'm a, a sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet uh, their actions speak differently. They're going down a different path. They're doing their own thing. And, and the Lord's saying, hey, follow me. And, and you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, Christians that are do, off doing their own thing, going their own direction. And, and uh, you know, it's like, well, okay, you're not following the Lord on this. But he is, is he yours? It, it is only when we know him that the blessing of the rest of the psalm becomes ours. It is possible to know the psalm without knowing the shepherd, though. You can know this psalm. Again, this is a very popular verse. If I, you know, if I started in verse number four, yea, though I walk through the... See, you know it, amen? I, I don't even have to... I can probably, uh, you know, uh, start one of the verses and you'll know it. Why? Because you, you know about the verse, amen? But it is much better to know the scripture and the uh, shepherd as well. So if the Lord is my shepherd and your shepherd, there are some things that this denotes. And we're going to look at some of these things. First of all, number one, it denotes uh, possession. Possession. Notice again what it says there in verse number, tw- uh, verse number one of Psalm chapter number 23. The Lord is what? My shepherd. And then he says what else? I shall not want. There's... There's something about when we make, uh, you know, the Lord our shepherd and we allow him to be our shepherd, uh, it denotes a possession. He's uh, my shepherd. He, uh, I belong to him. He belongs to me, but I, I belong to him. And therefore, because I belong to him, I'm going to follow his voice. I'm going to follow what he, what he does. But uh, uh, verse 1 has two parts, and the one cannot be separated from the other. You see, Possessing Christ, uh, we possess all things. If he is mine and I'm his, how can I ever want? Uh, how could I ever get to the point where I, I, uh, I want, you know, uh, again, he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 that I shall not want, he denotes a, that God provides everything for us. And we're going to see that. But uh, when, when we belong to the Lord, uh, he, uh, he takes care of us. Look with me, if you will, at uh, Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number four. I know there's a, again, there's a lot of scripture in this particular lesson and it is what it is. More so toward the beginning, I guess, uh, than the end of the lesson. There is some scripture that we'll look at in the end of the lesson, but not as much, I guess. Well, Philippians chapter number four. And notice with me verse number 19. Philippians chapter number four, verse number 19. But my God shall what? Supply all your what? My, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So it denotes to say that because we belong to him, he's the one that takes care of us. He's the one that uh, uh, provides for us. You know, uh, uh, a shepherd will do a number of things. A shepherd will make sure, and we'll, we'll, again, we'll see some of this in, in the uh, uh, text there in Psalm chapter number 23. But uh, a shepherd will provide uh, uh, food. 
uh, a shepherd will provide water, and a shepherd will provide uh, a place of rest, a place where uh, the sheep can, you know, relax. And, and uh, sheep that are on edge, they're, they're just not uh, uh, able to, uh, 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 you know, function properly and things like that. But in Colossians chapter number two, I want you to notice with me there, Colossians chapter number two, and notice verse number nine and 10. It says this, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are, what? Complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Christian, listen carefully. Too many times, we always think that there's something else out there. There's something more, uh, there, you know, we, we look at the, uh, uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen cows in, uh, uh, standing in clover that is up to their belly and they're reaching their neck through uh, the fence and they're doing this. They're trying to get some uh, ugly looking, you know, almost brown grass because in their head, they think that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. And there's a lot of Christians that are like that as well. They think there's gotta be something better. There's gotta be something more and God just says, hey, look, I'll supply your need. You just got to uh, allow me to be your shepherd, to guide and direct you, and I'll guide you to the place where you need, uh, you know, to get the right uh, nourishment, amen, yeah, we're going to see that. But the problem with uh, a lot of Christians, they're not making God their, uh, you know, uh, their shepherd. They're not making Christ their shepherd. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they're sitting there saying, well, I want to control my destiny, First of all, you're never going to find that in the Bible. You're never going to find a, 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 a scripture in the Bible that says, trust your own heart. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us, and this is, this is for free, so this, is, uh, this isn't even part of the lesson. This is for free. Uh, Jeremiah chapter, I want to say it's uh, chapter 29, I think, uh, or no, 19? Maybe it's chapter 19, where it talks about the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen? Uh, we're not to trust our own heart. We have to learn to trust our shepherd, amen? Because our shepherd knows what's best for us as sheep. And you can sit there and say, well, I'm not a sheep. Well, okay, then the Bible, if you're not a sheep, then you're not one of his. Because the Bible tells us all we like, amen? We're sheep. You can sit there and say, well, I don't want to be con uh, considered a sheep. Sheep are dumb. No, sheep are pretty smart. I said that even in that uh, message before. Sheep are very smart, Amen? There's a reason why sheep do the things that they do. But as a Christian, we have to get to the point where we say, okay, Lord, I'm going to follow you, and you're going to supply everything that I need. Notice again what he said there, verse number 10. And ye are what? Ye are what? Verse number 10, Colossians chapter number uh, uh, 2, verse number 10. And ye are what? Complete. The Lord will give you everything that will complete you as a Christian to help you to grow to the point where you need to grow, amen, to get you to, and, and the problem with some Christians, the reason why they're not growing, it's right here. It's what's going on in here. They're struggling with something, they're, they're resisting something, they're uh, pushing against something, and the Holy Spirit's just trying to work on them, saying, hey, hey, follow me, follow me, Amen. And the problem with a lot of Christians are sitting there saying, but I don't want to follow you. I don't want to do that. I don't, want to re I, I don't want to yield. And we have to get to the point where we're just willing to say, okay, Lord, I'll submit. Lord, I'll trust you. I'm not going to try to trust my own way. I'm not going to try to trust uh, uh, <clears throat> my own uh, 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 guidance or anything. I'm going to trust you, Lord. Uh, so we, we have to realize that when he possesses us, uh, he, he'll guide us and direct us. But what is it that I shall not want? What is it that uh, we aren't going to have to deal with as far as, you know, uh, uh, you know, not wanting? Well, turn with me, if you will, to Psalm chapter number 34. Psalm chapter number 34. And I want you to notice, I know it's in the lesson it says uh, verse number nine, but uh, we're going to skip back, uh, back up just one more verse. And uh, actually a couple of verses, actually, what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go back to verse number six. 
It says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. So Psalm chapter number 34, verse number six. Uh, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So we have deliverance. Uh, so uh, what, what uh, good thing shall we not want? Uh, well, uh, there's deliverance, amen. The fact that he's, uh, the Bible tells us that he encampeth around us, amen. Uh, it means he's a, uh, a, a guard, if you will, a fence, if you will, uh, that uh, prevents, remember, Satan can't uh, do anything to you what, but what permission uh, that he's gotten from God to be able to do to you. How do we know that? The book of Job, amen? Uh, there was a hedge of protection around Job, and, and uh, we know certainly that uh, there is that around us because uh, the Bible uh, uh, tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we know that uh, God is greater than Satan. But then he also says in verse number uh, eight, he says, uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good, wow. Blesses the man that trusteth in him. You know, uh, uh, the problem with a lot of Christians, they don't realize how good God is, amen? I think sometimes we get in our mind's eye, we think God is some bully, you know, just standing there with a club waiting to hit us over the head as soon as we do something wrong, right? That's the way a lot of people think. But God's not that way. He's trying to, remember, he's trying to get us to listen to his still small voice. And sometimes we have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, block out all the rest of the voices that are going on in this world that are trying to get us to do our own thing. Hey, if it feels good, do it. Hey, trust your own heart. Hey, uh, go your own direction. Hey, you know, uh, we have to get to the point where we just block out all those voices and we are willing to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to listen for your still small voice. Lord, I'm going to follow you. I know you have something good for me because I know you're good. Then he says there in verse number nine, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want, what? Any good thing. There's nothing, why? Because God will give you all those things that you need in your life. Again, uh, by the way, listen carefully. (laughs) That doesn't mean a million dollars. Amen? Amen. So many people are like, oh, I need a million dollars. No, no, no. That's not what he's talking about. By the way, if you can't handle your finances now, how, how do you think God's going to be able to entrust you with a million dollars? Amen? You can't be honest with God now. How do you think you're going to be honest with him when he gives you a million dollars? So he's talking about those things that we need in our life as a Christian to help us to grow spiritually. Yes, he does provide other things. Amen? Yes, I've seen, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, where you, you tithe, you give, and, and uh, you see, uh, uh, you know, the gas needle, and, you know, hardly move at all. I've seen that happen. I've watched it with my own eyes. I'm like, uh, I know how many miles I've put on, and this uh, gas gauge should be at least, you know, down to quarter, you know, three, three quarters of a tank. It should have burned up a quarter of a tank at least already. And, but no, I've watched it sit there at the full mark. I've watched God do uh, miraculous things, but God desires to give us those good things that, that, uh, uh, notice again, he said there, uh, uh, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So notice the good things which are enumerated then to us back in the book of Psalm chapter number 23. Notice in Psalm chapter number 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want you know what the shepherd does? The shepherd constantly protects the sheep. Amen? So there's, there's one thing, uh, security. Um, you know, you ever, you ever had something uh, stolen or taken from you? Amen? Boy, uh, I remember when we had uh, uh, the safe here at the church uh, stolen. Boy, I tell you, that was, uh, it was a sick feeling. It was like, what in the world? And, and uh, come to find out it was a neighbor kid that lived next door and and uh, he later bragged to a guy in, in uh, prison who uh, ended up working with a guy that was in our church. And he said, hey, I know who stole uh, the, uh, uh, the safe from your church and, and all that. We reported it to the police and all that. But anyways, nonetheless, uh, you know, it caused us to say, okay, we need to beef up some security things. We used to keep the uh, church building unlocked. Well, then we're like, okay, we got to lock the building. Um, okay, well, before when... Uh, 
uh, people had keys. Almost everybody had a key for my office. Well, guess what? Now we limited how many people had uh, keys to my office. We're like, okay, well, we can't give out so many keys. And, and uh, then we limited how many keys were uh, made for certain things. So now it's like, okay, there's a limited amount of people that have uh, keys for the building or keys for the office or whatever. And, uh, uh, and then we have them sign a, a disclosure and all that. And, uh, but anyways, uh, and we beefed up some security. You know, we've done that here at the church, you know, as far as uh, when services start. We uh, lock certain doors. There's a reason why. Uh, you know, it's not because we're, we're trying to lock everybody out. No, it's because your pastor has gotten information about uh, things that have happened in various uh, ministries and churches, and it's like, okay, how can we prevent that from happening here? Okay, hey, uh, let's have some cameras. Oh, hey, let's uh, lock certain doors uh, once the service starts. And why? Because we, we're trying to do our best to keep people secure. But listen carefully, God gives us that security because the Lord is my what? My shepherd. The shepherd is the one that keeps the sheep secure. He watches for the wolves. He's watching for uh, uh, those that are, are trying to cause harm, and, and he's uh, willing to lay down his life for the sheep. Amen? What security, what more secure uh, things do you, uh, you know, that to me is a good thing when you just are like, hey, I can be secure in Christ because he is my shepherd. Amen? What an encouraging thing to know. That he's, uh, he provides uh, security. So that's one of the good things. Notice what else happens. In verse number two and then verse number five, it says this, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Then in verse number five, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You ever, uh, you ever been filling something? And you weren't paying attention, and all of a sudden the cup was like really full, and you started running over. Amen. I know I've done that, and I'm like, whoop, whoops, uh, that was a little full. <laughs> Amen. You suck it off real quick there, and get as much off of it, and and uh, I don't know about you, I like I like going to. I'll give a free plug for A and W tonight. I like going to A and W and the root beer. Amen. Oh, it's really good, and uh, put it in there, and that froth. Amen. That foam. When it gets really foamy, I like getting it so it's just barely bubbling above the, uh, the, the rim of the uh, cup, and then I do this. I suck down. I, I, I enjoy that froth, amen? It just, uh, some of you are like, oh, but that's uh, carbon dioxide. Who cares? I like drinking it, amen? I, I'll suck it right down, amen? But you know, he's talking about a number of things there. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want... He leadeth me in what? Green pastures. There's places that God leads us that we need that spiritual nourishment, that, that uh, uh, place that we need to just say, okay, Lord, I need to feed, amen? And I'm so glad that God, uh, this is a good thing that God desires to give to us, to feed us spiritually. I had somebody one time, they said, Pastor Halep, I'm not getting fed spiritually. I said, okay, all right. So then I began to you know, pay attention to how often he was there. In a, uh, in a six-month period, he was literally at three services. Now, not three days. We're talking about three actual services. I went to him. I said, hey, brother, I figured out your problem. He goes, What? He's like, uh, you know, your messages probably aren't uh, got enough meat on it. I'm like, nope, that's not the problem. I said, the problem is, is you're, at, you're not here at the table to get the food that's presented. Oh, how dare you blame me? I'm like, no. I said, look at these services. This is when you were here. In the last six months, this is how often you've been here. And he tried to, uh, you know, make excuses for it. And I just told him, I said, look, I'm just telling you, hey, the food is being put on the table it's up to you whether you're going to eat or not. By the way, listen carefully. God can lead you to that green pasture. But again, if you're resisting him, if you're sitting there saying, I don't like this meal. I don't like what's, uh, what the pastor's preaching today. I don't like that he's preaching on my sin. I don't like how, how he said that. I don't like... Hey, God's trying to lead you to some green pastures so that way you will be able to get fed spiritually 
and be able to grow as you should. Amen? Something else he did, notice uh, the latter part of that verse number two. He leadeth me beside the what? Still waters. Sheep are very interesting. They're, they're very fickle. Uh, uh, they, uh, again, they're very intelligent. Uh, you know, uh, there are some dumb things that they do. You're like, what? didn't you see the ditch here? You know, I saw a video one time of this guy. He does everything he can to help this uh, sheep get out of the ditch. And it starts running down the road, and all of a sudden it jumps right back into the ditch further up the road. You're like, what, did you not see the ditch up, up there? It's the same ditch here, Amen. But sheep are also very fickle in that they, they don't like rushing water. Now, they don't want stagnant water, but they want, uh, you know, still water. They want uh, water that's moving, but, but very uh, still. So if it was a rushing river, like, for instance, uh, the Eau Claire River, uh, they probably, uh, Eau Claire or the Chippewa River, uh, they probably wouldn't drink. But if you go uh, up by, uh, uh, what is it, Riverview Drive, that part of the river... Now, it's, the water's pretty still there. That's still part of the river, but the water's pretty still there. The, the sheep would go down there and drink along that, that water. But you think about it, God has given us, as Christians, the water that we need. What is the water? It's the Word. Amen? Amen? And you shall be clean through the water. Amen? That's what he's talking about, the water of the Word. And, and you and I need to realize, hey, God is desiring uh, to give us what we need, and, and there, there's not going to be anything that we need uh, that he's not provided for us. So he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Then also notice uh, verse number five again, that uh, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So God's providing something right in front of the enemy. Amen? You ever, uh, you ever sat down at a table? Uh, we at, at Camp Chatech, we uh, 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 usually we try to do it on Wednesday, depending on uh, what the weather's like. We, we plan it for Wednesday, but we also tell everybody, hey, it could be Thursday morning. Uh, we do the breakfast cookout. And uh, the breakfast cookout, uh, I'm just going to tell you all right what it is. It's all-you-can-eat steak. It's good. I'm going to make you all mouth water tonight, and you're going to go home, and you're like, oh, pastor, I want some steak now, amen? But uh, uh, it's all you can eat steak. They have some potatoes. I think they have eggs. Uh, they have uh, pancakes there, uh, and it only costs, uh, I think it's $12 this, uh, this next year. We have to raise the price because they charge us a little extra. But, but uh, $12, you know, that's, uh, that's not bad for an all-you-can-eat steak uh, meal, amen? That's pretty good. I was like, wow, man, this is good stuff. And they're thin steaks. My, li- my wife likes uh, nice and thin. She doesn't like any red. I'm, I'm okay. I like medium well. It's all right. Uh, and Brother Chop, I love you. And I know he likes it a certain way. And I'm not going to complain. But I, if I go to his house and he prepares it, I'll eat it, don't I? Don't I? Amen. That's right. We'll have to get together and do that again. But anyways, I'm hungry for some steak. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But nonetheless... That table that was out there at that breakfast cookout is right there where everybody can see. Amen? If you notice what he said there, thou preparest a table uh, before me in the presence of mine enemies. God gives us exactly what we need so there's not any good thing that we need and he'll do it right in front of the enemy. Amen? He'll do it right in front of Satan. He'll say, hey, here it is. Amen? That great steak. Whether it's, uh, what, I don't know, how is it prepared? What is that, medium rare? Medium rare. Medium rare, medium well, well done. I don't care, amen? It's steak, amen? It's sitting right there in front of the enemy, and you're able to enjoy it and say, hey, Satan, look at what God's provided for me, amen? Why? He's done it right there before the enemy. Notice what else he does. Look at that, uh, look at that uh, verse again. Uh, verse number uh, five. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with what? I already explained that to you. What it does is that oil uh, prevents the, uh, uh, the bugs and mites and, and flies from getting on the, uh, on the uh, head of the, the sheep. What happens is those flies, if that, if that oil isn't on there, the flies will literally drive the, the uh, 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 sheep mad. They'll literally butt their head uh, and they'll knock themselves silly uh, because they're trying to get uh, away from the bugs. So what the shepherd does is he takes that, that oil and anoints their head with oil. Why? It's to keep the bugs away. 
It's to keep the annoying things away, amen? You say, well, uh, the Lord doesn't keep my spouse away from me. No, 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 that's not what we're talking about, amen? Satan will do all kinds of things to annoy us. And the Lord, when he uh, anoints our head with oil, he'll just help us be able to say, okay, hey, it's okay. God's in control. Yes, Satan will do those annoying little things. He'll try to to, uh, trip us up. He'll try to discourage us. But uh, God's there reminding us that he's anointing our head with oil. Then what uh, what he said there in verse number five, the latter part of that verse, he said, my cup, what? Runneth over. As I said, you know, There have been times when my heart has just been so full of just the blessings of God. Amen? That's what he's talking about. Your cup running over. Meaning there's so many blessings that your, your uh, life just seemed, seemed to not be able to contain it all. And you're like, hey, let me tell you what the Lord's done. Amen? Why? That's what God wants to do in your life. The problem with so many Christians, they're... They're uh, not wanting to follow the Lord so much and they're barely getting anything from the cup that they're, they're holding on to. And God says, hey, let me fill your cup. Let me fill it so full that it's running over. And instead they're like, no, no, I don't want to follow the Lord. I, want... <sighs> oh, I got that last drop. And that's what they're trying to survive on. Uh, trying to uh, uh, make their, their own way, again, following them, their, their heart or whatever they're told, rather than saying, hey, I'm going to follow the Lord because he has something better for me, and he's going to fill my cup so full that it's just running over. I've had times where uh, uh, I had one time a person uh, uh, filled a cup, and it was so full, uh, I couldn't even put the lid on. I had to, again, I had to suck it off the top there just to be able to get the lid on, Amen. That's what God wants to do in our heart and our life. But it takes us being willing to say, Lord, you're my shepherd. Lord, I'm going to follow you. Lord, I'm going to submit to you. Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Lord, I I don't uh, want to try to do my own thing. I don't want to squander away uh, uh, those things in my own heart and my own life. Lord, I'm so thankful that you're willing to provide for me. Oh, we see there the provisions. So we see there, uh, as far as uh, what uh, good things that he provides, uh, he provides security, he provides uh, 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 provision, but uh, we're going to have to stop because I just saw the time. So bring that lesson back with you. And uh, next week, uh, we will have a guest speaker, um, and uh, I will be uh, out of town, and uh, so... Uh, make sure you uh, be here, though. And uh, uh, but, uh, um, anyways, uh, uh, make sure you're here next week. And uh, uh, but we'll continue this lesson. You don't need to bring it back next week, but the week after, we'll continue the lesson there. Blessed is the man. Lesson number four, page number two, and uh, letter H is where we'll pick up next week. All right. Uh, so, uh, all right.